Hello, my name is James. I'm with City Utilities. I'm in the inspection department, and I'm going to be your inspector today on showing you how to properly install a transformer pad location. This uh, particular transformer area has one primary coming in, and we've got four two-inch PVC elbows coming out to be able to serve multiple areas for secondary. So once we're finished with this journey, I hope that you'll be able to understand on how to properly uh, install these things and get them put into our specs and our standards. Before we get started on all the measurements and the, and the thing that is that I like to see when I show up on a job, let's talk quickly about the components of a transformer location. So what you're going to be dealing with is you're going to have one of our new plastic pads. This, would, this is going to accommodate up to a 100 kVA transformer, just a, a typical type house installation, some small commercial. Um, on this particular location, what we're going to be dealing with here is a ground rod. We're going to be using a 36 inch radius, not a 24 inch radius, but a 36 inch radius primary steel galvanized elbow. And on the end of that elbow, what you're going to be installing is a five foot section of galvanized pipe. And on the end of that galvanized pipe, you will also have what they call an FA fitting or a female adapter. It's threaded on one end to go on the galvanized and it's PVC on the other to be able to go out to accommodate the PVC pipe or conduit that you would be installing. So on this particular location we have four 24 inch secondary that's coming out the side. Now about our transformer location itself we always have primary coming in on the left side and secondary going out on the right side. This is non-negotiable. These are the way the transformers are made so you need to be sure and get with your engineer as far as how and the way that you may want the transformer lid in the back to be opening. Um, it's not uncommon at all for primaries and secondary conduits to cross to accommodate a better looking product at the end to have the doors open the way it is that the customer may want. We always have to have a 10 foot clearance in front of the transformer and three foot radius all the way outside. That means no plants, no bushes, no trees, no walls, nothing in front of that transformer. We have to be able to have access not only to open it, but to be able to work on it and work on it safely. So if you would do us a favor and make sure that wherever you're plating, placing your transformer, make sure that it's put in a safe place that we can all work around it. So let's talk about the transformer itself and the placement of the elbows. The contractor has already dug all this in. I've asked him to not backfill this so I can explain effectively what it is that we're going to be looking at. So behind me what you would see is a 36 inch ditch that has, I'm sorry, 36 inch cover of ditch. It's, it's a 38 to 40 inch ditch all the way down through here. He's already laid in his two inch plastic pipe. He used purple primer and glue. That's another thing that we like to see is the purple primer. It helps soften the material and, and helps things stick together a whole lot better. And, and it's less likely for it to come apart when the ground shifts, earth shifts, things like that. So behind me, 36 inch ditches of cut or 36 inch cover over the pipe coming up to that steel that's in the ground. And you may ask why it is that we have that five foot section of steel is because we use large trucks and this is a large run that's actually behind me. It's gonna be pulling about 300 to 400 feet of cable. So on the other end, we have another section that has that five foot stick underground. We use these for anchor points. This is so these elbows don't come out of the ground once we're pulling on it. So that's the reason why we call, why we call out a five foot section of pipe buried in the ground, compacted, so that these elbows don't come out of the ground once we're pulling that wire, because that wire becomes very heavy. So back to the transformer. We have the, the 36 inch radius elbow coming into the left side. And on top of this, the contractor currently has used what they call an FA fitting because he's going to make adjustments for the depth and how this thing sits. The, the pad is just a little bit low in the ground. Once he's completed and finished, there will be gravel around here and this pad will be raised up about four inches. So in order to accommodate that, I'm going to let him leave this FA on here and he's going to put a piece of two inch plastic and then on top of that, he'll have one of these two inch bell rings on top of that. This two inch bell ring right here, or bell fitting, is, is, is a little bit difficult to find in Springfield, but they are out there. 
Um, we have to have these on every location of the risers. Anywhere where there's primary cable being uh, pulled in, this has to be used. And the reason for that is because of the rounded edge, this rounded lip allows the wire to be able to pulled into effectively without destroying the jacket or the, or the, uh, the plastic or the rubber coating around the wire. So this we have to have. Every primary location will have this on here. The contractor's already installed these on the secondary side because he knows the same things. His secondary cable is going to be long runs and he doesn't want to hurt the wire as it's being pulled into the, into the pipe. So on the secondary side, what, what we said is on the right side of the transformer. The lid will open this direction. The bulk of the tank sits in the back. We have the primary coming into this side. You'll see a ground rod right here in the middle. We like to have at least a minimum of eight inches of separation between the primary and the secondary area. There's a, there's a window there, and that's where we want to have that ground rod installed to just to the left or just to the right of that. On the secondary side, you'll see that he already has these bell fittings uh, pulled in there as well. Like I said, he's going to have to do a little bit of adjustment here for height differentials, <clears throat> but <clears throat> at the end of this, there'll be some gravel here. The pad will be perfectly level, and, I, and everything will be just fine. As soon as he calls me whenever this stuff is done, I'll come out and make sure that the gravel has been installed properly, that the pad is leveled, bell fittings are installed. The end of this will have a string that goes inside of here that's been blown in while me being present on site or someone from our facilities has visually watched them put in the string, make sure it's done correctly. That's to be able to pull in our uh, cable or our rope. Okay, I wanna quickly go over what uh, most contractors in the area just call a goat rope. Um, this actually is just a bare indicator to let someone else know that, hey, there's something in the ground. Or we use this also at the end of our futures. And, and, what, and what I mean by a future is maybe a pipe that's being buried that's coming out that we will plan to use in the near future. And what this does, the contractor here has already, as you can kind of see, has, has put in some poles in the ground of his secondaries that are coming out. So that lets him know where they're at so when he comes back to dig in the secondaries. But we also use these in primary locations as well. And the way that they work is they just simply go around, they snap in inside of each other, and the pipe will simply go through the center of this. This right here winds up getting mashed against the side of the ditch and getting covered up. And what sticks out of the ground usually is something about like this right here. Eventually somebody's gonna mow over it, weed eat it, that's fine. But on our prints, we'll note that this is in the ground and it's in the location approximately 10 feet, 15, 20 feet, whatever the notes may say, that it's 15 feet north of the junction cabinet. So the next contractor or the next person that comes to dig it up, they'll find this in the ground and they know that they're in the right location. So I hope that uh, the explanation of this here might also help you. The contractor here, like I said, has used these indications for his own purposes to be able to dig in for future purposes in uh, coming up. So if you have any questions, please give us a call at 417-863-9000. You'll be able to follow those prompts and be able to get in touch with somebody from the line department, somebody from engineering, or possibly the tech house. If you look on your prints that they give you or that they email you from engineering, you'll find the phone number 417-450-7347. If you give that number a call, it's associated with this job. Either me or someone else will come out and go over a pre-construction meeting with you and go over all of the standards with you. So I hope this video has helped you out. Please give us a call if you have any questions. And remember, always be safe.